Lane Kiffin is one of the most interesting head coaches in the history of this sport. It's one of the most interesting stories in the history of this sport. And he sat down with us today for an extended conversation about a lot of things, some of it football, some of it totally off the field unrelated to football, some of it about what he thinks about himself from a decade to a decade and a half ago. Here is Lane Kiffin with us at SEC Media Days. Lane Kiffin, head coach of Ole Miss, rounding things out at SEC Media Days. I actually walked over to the big room and listened to you this morning. And I want you to go back to 2010 and imagine you're a head coach 13 years later and the questions are about AI, um, something called the transfer portal, salaries, and free agency. Certainly you would have thought you were in the NFL. What if I told you that was actually a college football press conference? About as strange as you told me I was at the press conference as the head coach of Ole Miss. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, it really is crazy how much it has changed. And really those things have changed just in a couple years. And I said the, a massive change was NIL. And a massive change was Portal. And they kind of happened at the same time. You know, these are groundbreaking changes that the same time that ended up completely affecting each other because it was now, like we're talking about the NFL, now I can opt into free agency and I get paid, you know, whenever I want to, basically. And so it creates um, not just an NFL model, but the NFL plus problems. An NFL model, but not the structure. You made uh, a really good point this morning. I kind of thought about it from a different lens because of the way you put it. You said players, they're getting what they can right now. I would do the same thing if I were them because it's kind of a window. Chances are, I agree with what you said, this window's pretty small. So if you fast forward to 2033, 43, 53, we're looking back on the history of college football. I mean, how do you think about the past five-year window? How do you think we'll describe that in the future? Well, I say that about this window, and I think of it like before they got rookie contracts under control. Because the veterans were like, wait, here's Jamarcus Russell <laughs> making $63 million. You know, so after that time frame there, they started changing, okay, what they could make, um, you know, uh, capping what the rookies could make. So I feel like that's kind of like those players got to utilize that window of making so much on rookie contracts. That's where these guys are at now. They have this little window before it gets structured. A lot of the motivation for a college football player is to high school, college football, hopefully make life-changing money in the NFL. And I'm not suggesting that the money in, in college football is anywhere remotely close to what you can earn at the highest level of the NFL, but there are guys who are making pretty substantial money in college. I want to know from you, like a person to person, do you ever see that change the motivation dynamic? Do you ever see a guy develop maybe the kind of ego that otherwise would have been three or four more years down the road and if you see that start to play out in practice or you see that start to play out in the locker room and starts to affect your team how do you actually go about dealing with that I think it's definitely an issue um, I like to tell our staff like you know let's be really reasonable and realistic about what's going to happen how players think not just like well this is what they're supposed to think they should just want to be the best they can and win and okay well that's great and some are wired like that but a lot of their motivation and there's nothing wrong with it we need to accept that like as coach like I talked like accept it is money they want to get to the NFL because they want to play in the NFL but actually a lot of their motivation is the money because unfortunately our youth thinks that when you get money it's going to solve everything which it'll create more problems but that's a different subject so now if they have it and Mary, like you say, okay, well, it's not as much as they're going to get in the NFL, but to some of them, they're like, wait, I'm getting a couple hundred thousand dollars and I've never had anything. It seems like in their mind, like they're making millions. So there is a major problem in there in ego that comes in and motivation. You know, if you're, let's say you had two motivations to go to the NFL. One was to put on that jersey and go to the NFL and the other is to get money one of them just went away a little yeah. bit, you know, um, depending on how much that, that you get. And the na naiveness that, well, I have this, I'm going to be set for this many years because of it. 
What's your philosophy on acquiring quarterback talent? You guys got a couple out of the portal. I think it surprised some people. I mean, I raised my eyebrow at it, but at the same time, if I ran a team, I'd want to have as many talented guys in the room as possible. Is that pretty much the way you looked at that? Sure. Like an NFL team, like <clears throat> your goal as the head coach or general manager or owner is like to make the best roster that you can and make the best position groups that you can and add talent. And so, like I said, you know, like, we don't recruit or add talent or not add talent based off of someone's feelings. Mm-hmm. Of course, a lot of players don't want other good players coming at their spot. I mean, it just, again, let's be realistic. So, um, but that's not my job. My job is to put the best team and the best players together. If we were to, let's go time machine again, second time in like five minutes. You take the job at Tennessee 09 and you're watching it. It's 2023 Lane Kiffin. You have a conversation with that guy. What are you going back there and telling him? What advice are you giving him? Um, slow down. You don't know very much. You think you do. Um, and, you know, just be more appreciative of where you're at and how fast you got there instead of always just trying to, like, get more and get to the next thing. Do guys ask you for advice on that kind of stuff? Do people seek it out from you knowing you've, you've been several places now? Well, I think that our past is huge to help people and to utilize your past. And so even it happens all the time, like on subjects like what I'm trying, what we're talking about players and getting the money too fast and then like thinking, okay, well, that's all good. I I got money, so all my problems are solved and be able to go through situations and explain to them like, well, here, I had that really early and that that didn't make these things go away. So you still got to work on these things and you still got to, you know, fight your ego which is a a major monster when you get too much too early you see that in all professions if if I look at this Ole Miss team it's easy for me to just open a preview magazine and look at what they say but what do you say are the one or two focal points that will determine three or four games either way this year (coughs) defense um, new staff new players all over the place Um, so how fast does that come together and then getting back to to taking care of the ball you know, we were actually minus one in turnover margin, which for years at different places we've been, we've been really good at. And so um, taking care of the ball, finishing drives. Lane Kiffin, awesome stuff. All right, guys. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yep. One of the great what-ifs in the history of college football. What if Lane Kiffin stayed at Tennessee? What if he turned down the job offer from USC? Director Colin asks me this about once or twice a week. And I am the shruggy emoji once or twice a week. I don't know, Colin. I do think it's interesting. You listen to a little retrospective there, or an introspective, I guess that would be. He's telling himself, slow down. You don't know anything. You think you do, 09 Lane, but you don't know anything. Let me tell you, if you weren't around for it, he he may have been in over his skis, according to himself, a little bit, but it was fun. It was nothing if not fun. And that dude played Alabama to the wire in his one year at Tennessee. It takes a blocked field goal at the end of regulation. Alabama gets out, I think, a 12-10 winner. And Bama goes on to win the national title that year. Lane Kiffin was really good for us today. We appreciated him.